One to the two, two to the three, in the place to be. It's your boy BQ. Welcome to the B-Side Podcast here at the Impact Lounge. So I just finished watching the debut on Access TV and didn't get an opportunity to watch it last night. I watched a little bit of it, but we had a, a, a trunk or treat thing going on and Halloween parade. Uh, so, you know, I took the kids to go do that. Um, but I did catch, you know, the first match and a half, uh, after, you know, before I went to bed. And I wrapped uh, the rest up, rest up this morning after... I took the kids to school, and um, the first thing I got to say about this, and I'm jumping right into it. I don't, I don't like these podcasts where people start telling you these stories and all, everything to kick off the show. Let's let's jump into the meat and potatoes. What you're here for. So the first thing I want to say about the Access TV era now that it's kicked off is that I want to take things back a little bit when I first started podcasting covering impact and i started podcasting shortly after they debuted on pop tv and i was excited for pop tv because i didn't get destination america so however long they were with them a year or so whatever i didn't know what was going on with impact i wasn't as heavy into the internet back then i you know i just kind of watched what was on tv and that's how i kept up with my my programs my shows because i was Back then I was doing music and that was taking most of my spare time up. So I really didn't have the time to like go on the internet and read results and stream things, you know, between my job and everything. Like I, that just wasn't me back then. So when they were coming to pop TV, I was, I was real. I mean, when I say I was excited, that's an understatement. I was, I could not wait for that day to come. And I remember watching the first episode and it was just, it was nothing. Like, they debuted, they, I shouldn't say they debuted, James Storm returned, which was great. That was that was probably the biggest part of the show. But the presentation of the show was still just blah. And back then, the Impact Zone crowd, actually, because I went to the next set of tapings. The um, I mean, the first set of taping, tapings when they returned to Orlando. You know, because you remember when they debuted on Pop there in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I was there when they debuted... Now, I keep throwing that word debut out there. When they returned to Orlando. And the crowd was actually really hot back then. You know, as they continued to tape in the Impact Zone in Orlando in 2016. You know, by the end of the year, it was, we all know, it was totally dead in there. But when, when the tapings that I went to, it was, it was it was pretty loud. I remember I actually walked in late. And it was in the middle of Bobby Lashley being interviewed by the Pope, maybe. It, it was either him or Josh Matthews. But he had he had speared the Pope because it was leading towards, you know, the Pope actually had a match, a street fight with Lashley. And I think Pope was standing up for Josh Matthews or something like that. But I remember I walked in and it was loud in there. And my, my six-year-old, who's six now, you know, back then he was whatever he was, three. And we were sitting in the bleachers and he was actually like covering his ears a lot saying, you know, it's loud, it's loud. So, you know, the crowd was not bad back then, but the show itself, and I'm not talking about the one I went to, but the, when they debuted on pop TV, there was nothing behind it. Like no new presentation. The website was exactly the same. They didn't come out with any new merchandise, new catchphrase. It was nothing. It was just like, hey, come give Impact Wrestling a chance. And they had built the world title series up to EC3 versus Hardy, which was that was that was a big deal because that's for the world title. But the World Series was so bad leaving leading up to that. And I remember also Bobby Roode had issued an open challenge. He's like any wrestler in any company. You know, what I mean, he made, made it sound like this was a big deal. And Bram came out and answered the challenge. And it was so unceremonious in the way. I don't even think they played his music. I think he just kind of like came out. And then, you know, the main event where EC3 won the title. Like, we knew EC3 was going to win. And I remember it was so disturbing because he was... Maybe you guys remember this. He wrestled the entire... I should say the entire... Probably half the match with his ass cheek hanging out. He never fixed his, his trunks. And he just had his ass cheek hanging out the whole match. It was kind of disturbing, to be honest. 
hard to watch the match. But as far as everything else, like it was just a normal episode of Impact. And I remember feeling back then, you know, like they're really trying to do WWE things, but it's not working because the crowd is so much smaller. You know what I mean? And um, that, you know, it just wasn't special. There's nothing special. I enjoyed the show, but it was just like watching an episode of Impact. It wasn't what I was expecting. And, you know, Jeremy Borash had kind of tease, oh, you never know who's coming. You know what I mean? And, you know, James Storm came, whatever. That's that's really all that happened. And that was a good moment. Um, I think Eli Drake and Jesse Goddard wrestled in a tag team match. You know, I, I don't remember. So anyway, I've been talking about that too long. This Access TV debut. We watched the program. The camera angles are, are different. I'm hoping they go back to what they had this. I don't remember in the previous Windsor tapings that they do this. I want to say no. I know they did it for Nashville and they do it for Mexico, but when they show the, you know, the large side portion of the audience on screen, just like they did in Orlando because they changed the new angle. And to be fair, I had been asking for new angles for a really long time, but I think it was mainly because I was so bothered by the impact zone crowd, you know, same, same people in the front row leaning on the, on the rails or having a conversation with their back to the action, um, noticeably bored, you know. So back then, I'm like, man, can we get a different angle that doesn't show all this? And now we get, we get, we have hotter crowds, we have larger crowds, and they are using angles that don't show the crowd. And then you get the trolls online who are, oh, there's that's because there's 15 people there. We're like, no, like in Windsor, I think it was estimated talking to my. Um, Talking to my buddy, uh, I mean, 800 people or so, maybe maybe up to a thousand, but I, I know it was in that ballpark. So there was a good amount of people there, you know, three times what the Impact Zone used to put on TV, but we're not seeing that. So this was cool this time because we saw the crowd, and whenever they show these damn flashbacks, which are always the worst part of the show, except tonight, except tonight. I'll get back to that in a second. But the flashbacks are always so bad. Um, you know, ma- major bathroom breaks. It always shows how bright the arena was. And, you know, and then they go back to the current impact product. Then it's dark. And, you know, and we know this is, you know, partial to block out the crowd if they're not there or whatever. But there's times where there's a good sized crowd there. And we don't, you know, we don't get to see it. So they had the lights, the red lights. So they still maintained what they like to do with blacking out the crowd, but they had those red lights flashing on them. It was aesthetically beautiful. The red ropes too. Beautiful. I just, um, I love that they changed the color scheme. You know, I I mentioned the pop TV area when they kicked off, you know, just nothing was the same. They even come out with new merch. You know, they got the hard to kill shirt, which they're pushing that. And that's the next pay-per-view. And I'm and and I give them an a plus because I, I kill Impact's marketing almost every day. I give them an A plus for the hard to kill pay per view. Uh, it was so smart to name it that. That is the most organic, and it was kind of you know thank you Chris Jericho I guess, but the most organic tagline they've had in the longest time because every other you know this is Impact and everything. It's, it's always they try to tell you oh this is what we want our hashtag and our, our tag to be and. You know, it always says impact in it. And there's only so much you can play off the word impact. So this here, th- this was, you know, I would imagine that shirt is selling really well. I probably need to order one here myself. Actually, I think I, I will this week. But I would imagine it's, it's doing well. And I like that with the pay-per-views that they're just, there's a meaning. Like homecoming was, you know, going back to the, the asylum and, everything you know we're not just getting the same pay-per-view names every year this is the big pay-per-views obviously slam versus and bound for glory but they're they're switching things up and giving us different titles and and there's a, a point behind them you know so hard to kill we don't even know where that's going to be yet but i really i give them a lot of props for that i give them props for the commercials where they say for more impact content content text here you know which i did that 
Um, so we'll see what happens with that. So they're, they're using some new ideas and that's what I've been begging them to do. Like have a fresh take on your, on your, your marketing plan and how to reach more people. You can't just do it through social media and bound for glory's build took a huge hit because, you know, not to their fault, but they, they were, you know, pushing the access, the move to access at the same time. So Bound for Glory's promotion took a took a oh my god, but I think they did a good job of letting people know it's coming to Access TV, and I give them props too that you know four weeks prior to debuting Access TV they had Access TV specials they had the pay per views. Now if you're one of those people who are complaining, oh I paid for this pay per view that's not fair, go so screw yourself, get over yourself. Those pay-per-views were months ago. They're on the they're on freaking Impact Plus now. For seven ninety nine, like get over yourself. Don't don't make it about you. This was huge for Impact to do that, to say hey these are because their pay-per-views deliver they're top notch. So because you don't want to get over yourself because you paid for the pay-per-view you don't want more eyes on those huge successful amazing shows that could bring in more eyes to the product because you can't get over yourself i paid for those pay-per-views too i don't give a shit that they were on tv the wrestling world should see those pay-per-views more less people see the pay-per-view than see the weekly product that's with every company You, you know what i'm saying so think how many you know impacts viewership this year was the lowest it's ever been Obviously, pursuit played a whole, you know, a huge role in that. So, imagine what the pay per view buys were. So, why would they not put these on Access TV? So, this was smart because they were it allowed Impact to put their best foot forward on Access. You know, to say, hey, here's our three pay per views. My buddy Trent from Impact Lounge and the Total Nonstop Podcast, he. Asked me on Twitter because I, I made a tweet saying I, I watched MLW once and I didn't care for it. But I'm willing to buy the pay-per-view this weekend for 20 bucks. And he said, well, why would you buy the pay-per-view? Why don't you just watch the, the free products and see if they'll hook you in that way? Like, I have to believe that if I watch this pay-per-view that they're putting their best foot forward. And... Just me trying to catch up on the weekly products. I know just me firing up an episode on YouTube probably isn't going to hook me in at this point. Because I haven't been watching the product this whole time. It's not like the NWA where I'm, I've watched every episode up to this point. So I already know what to expect. Like with MLW. And even if someone's tuning into Impact. Like if you're turning into an, tuning into an episode. And it could be a good episode. It could be a bad episode. Maybe I caught a bad episode. Maybe I'll catch another bad episode if I if I you know if I watch it. But if I watch the pay-per-view, I have to believe that's that's their best foot forward. And if I like it, I'm more inclined to say, you know what? I think I'll check out MLW next week. That's how I am as a fan. So I have to believe there's other people who are saying, okay, I don't really have time to, with all the wrestling going on, watch all these Impact shows. I just, I just don't have time for that to see if I like it. Oh, I just have to watch this week. I can watch a pay-per-view. Okay, I'll do that because that's the culmination of a bunch of feuds and 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 all that. That's their best foot forward. So, you know, people watch you know Homecoming, Slammiversary, Bound for Glory, and these were all not I'm sorry, not Bound for Glory, but uh, Rebellion. And these were really good pay per views. So I think that was a good way of a month in advance, and then they did the this is Impact special of of making sure people knew. To switch over to Access TV. You saw the other day WWE had to make a pretty much a last minute change because of the World Series going to Fox Sports 1. And they had 900,000 viewers. It's not as always just easy as, as making a quick switch. And then the people were complaining, oh, well, how come there's a rerun on this week? Like, again, get over yourself. Allow them to have a promotional plan to make the move from Pursuit to Access TV. Just because you want them to have a new episode on this week. Watch it on Twitch this Friday, fool. So, there's been a lot of good that they're doing right now. Yeah, I big time criticized the Bound for Glory build. 
I felt like they were the only company with no buzz that no one was talking about. So I'm going to be critical because that's, that's what I do. It's my job, but I'm going to let them know with when, what they're doing is excellent too. And what they've, they've been doing a lot of good things in relations to the access TV move with the little commercials with the wrestlers. I wish they did more of those because those were effective. They were short and effective. I want to see them. I, I'm, I'm no shit considering um, unsubscribing from their YouTube this week because I get all their notifications. And after Bound for Glory, Bound for Glory was so good. What's the next upload after Bound for Glory? Check out Sting versus AJ Styles. Throwback. And subscribe to Impact Plus. Fuck, fuck no. Give me a reason to subscribe to Impact Plus with what's going on now. You just had this badass pay-per-view and you're taking that the momentum from that to try to f- funnel people back into Sting versus AJ. So I- I'm considering unsubscribing only because it's just my own. <laughs> I mean, it's just my own thing. You know what, Impact? Hook me back in to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Give me some some exclusive content. Look what... AEW does with YouTube, with being the elite and everything. And YouTube, YouTube for a company this size, that's easy revenue. Like me, I gotta bust my ass to make money with YouTube. Like that's easy revenue revenue for Impact. So look what NWA does with YouTube. Now, granted, a lot of their content outside of Ten Pounds of Gold and the and the weekly show don't don't get a lot of hits, but look what they're doing with it. They're still in the early stages. They're still trying to do exclusive content. Like you, I was explaining to someone the other day to Talking Impact on Instagram. Make sure you're following them. Make sure you follow the Impact Lounge on Instagram. Shit. I was telling him the other day as a YouTuber, you create content to get new subscribers. Like every time I do content, I shouldn't say every time, but most of the time my content is with trying to get new subscribers, but appeals to my current subscribers. Like if I just make content for my current subscribers, I'll never grow. But if you have the mindset, do stuff that your current subscribers want to hear, but would also hook in new people. That's the mindset behind YouTube. And I don't think Impact's doing that because the people who watch the product now and the people who already subscribed, I shouldn't say that. The people who watch the product now, they don't care about the highlights because they just watched it. So they're making content strictly for to try to get new subscribers, which is good. But here's the problem. This is this is where I'm putting some YouTube game on you. As a YouTuber, if I release an upload that my subscribers don't want or don't like, the, the non-subscribers will never see it. There's something called view velocity that if I put out an upload and my subscribers are watching it right away and they're liking and they're commenting and they're sharing it, my, my channel will now grow, grow because YouTube will get a signal saying, okay, these people like it. So we're going to, we're going to spread this to even more people in suggested videos and, you know, to non-subscribers. But YouTube also gets signals that when your current subscribers don't care about the upload, it tells them, why would we show it to other people? You, you Are you tracking with me on that? So when you're just posting highlights all the time and matches that these, these throwback matches that a majority of the fan base are getting really tired of, because you can go on any social media platform and they'll tell you that. If they're not watching it, the new people will never see it. So if you if you create original content that has that that's exclusive to the people who love Impact, I shouldn't say exclusive, it's exclusive content, but it, it tailors the people who really love Impact and they, you know, something that makes me want to watch. I haven't watched anything on the YouTube channel in months. Because I have no reason to, because I already see it. I've already seen it. But if you do that, it's now going to grow your channel even further 
and more people will see it and you'll get more ad revenue and, and all that. So let's get into, um, you know, impact. I just wanted to get all that on my, off my chest for the first half of the podcast. And now I'm going to talk about impact itself. Uh, I want to throw out there really quick, uh, bound for glory. I, I did make it to the show. I loved it. And honestly, I, I don't feel like I can give a good reaction to the show because when you're there and when you're watching it on TV, it's so different. You know, I will just tell you the crowd was loud. It was engaged. It was huge. And everything I said about the call your shot gauntlet, I take it back because I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Just wish the build to all these things were so much more important and bigger. I, I will stay that forever. But the gauntlet was crazy entertaining. And that Kylie Ray pop, massive. Huge pop. Biggest pop of the night for, for anybody, I promise. Eddie got it. Eddie gets a hell of a pop too. But let's get into, you know, impact here. I, I'm going to go over it briefly. You know that I don't um, go real into depth with it. It kicked off with Marafuji and Josh Alexander. I was really surprised Marafuji lost at Bound for Glory. I know that the, the win was good for Michael Elgin. But it was odd for me to for them to bring someone from Japan, who you know in the pre, in the in the build up to it had no promos or he wasn't there, like he was a big deal to where he arrived for the pay per view and then he lost, like he came from Japan to lose. So th I didn't expect that. I knew he would most likely beat Josh Josh Alexander, and my daughter was very disappointed because she's a a massive Marafuji fan. So she was very disappointed for that loss. Um, but the match with Josh Alexander was everything we had hoped it would be, everything we expected it to be. It was it was excellent. Speaking of YouTube, um, Ethan Page is someone that he gets it. He's he he nails YouTube. He gets it. I really think he would be a great person to sit down with and talk talk to Impact's you know whatever team social media team they have and. Give them ideas because he gets it. He gets it. The knockouts tag match, um, Rosemary, Alexa Nicole, Alexia Nicole, Jordan Grace. They took on Taya Madison and Kiera. Like, I was really shocked that like Taya got the jobber entrance. I mean, it was I guess it was a multi knockout tag team match, and you know they made uh, Rosemary the big deal. I I hate when they don't play entrances. Doesn't matter what company. The minute you don't play someone's entrance, they don't matter in that match. They don't feel, they don't feel the same. I, I truly feel that way. Would love to see Alexi Nicole just become an official knockout. You know, she you can't. She doesn't have the charisma of you know Rosemary, and you know she's not Tessa Blanchard in the ring, but she's really good in the ring, and she fits a she fits a role. You know, because you can't have the knockouts division isn't very big. You can't have all people who are contenders for the knockout title. Like that's what's killed Alicia Edwards this whole time because she's the only person who can like afford to regularly take losses. And now it's like, well, fuck, how are they going to ever build her up to beat anybody at this point? You know, you got to have the good thing is impact doesn't have jobbers on the roster, but you have to have people who can take losses. And they don't really have that in the knockouts division. Like all, they all need to win all the time. Um, so and right now that you know, there's been some 50-50 booking with them and within ugh, with them and everything. And I just think they have to expand the knockouts division out a little bit more. But you have to have some women who can take losses, you know. And she she can do that, but she's also good. She she looks good. She's great in the ring, you know, and she's someone you can mold too, you know, like look what Kiara Hogan was. They were able to mold her into what she is now. And with the exception of Kiara, you know, they haven't really been able to take on a knockout in a long time who wasn't already established. So that's why I want to see him see Alexi Nicole come over because, you know, they can do something with her. They can build something with her and they have failed time and time again with t bringing in new knockouts, like brand new girls and not having a clue what to do with them. Kiara is the exception. So I was entertained by the match. 
And Josh Matthews had said that uh, Jordan Grace has never challenged for the Knockouts Championship. She's had multiple <laughs> Knockouts Championship matches with Ty Valkyrie. She had one at Rebellion at a, on a pay-per-view. So uh, they're building her up, looks like, to challenge Taya, but why not Rosemary? I, I don't... For Rosemary, for someone who's been along with, been in the company so long, only her, Eddie Edwards, um, Alicia Edwards, and ah, it's one other person have been around from the, the the TNA days. I can't remember who it is. So uh, she's only had one knockouts championship reign. I mean, get her in the damn title picture. They, they, they've been building her and Taya having this weird like relationship so why not why not get her in there i don't i don't understand that one but you know it looks like that that's where they want to go with it then they did the rascals segment i i'm rarely entertained by the rascals even though i thought the fall of bob part was really good i thought the whole segment was too long but if, i mean i could be wrong with this but if you're a new person tuning into access that i wouldn't play the the Rascals Treehouse segments. That's not... I think that's more for people who already enjoy Impact. I, I don't think that's going to hook anyone. I could be totally wrong because I've told you before the reason I don't like it is because I can't relate to it. But maybe those of you who relate to it think it's really, really good. Um, What else we got? So RVD, this promo. Whew, that's me clapping. This was so good. I was really indifferent on RBD being there to begin with. And the, the reason being not because, R, I mean, RBD is a legend, but the reason I was worried was because, you know, he went on record to say I phoned it in for Impact before to pay me good money and I wrestled half ass matches. You know, so I was worried about what he was going to bring this time around. And with the exception of when he single-handedly took out Fulton and Dave um, that bothered me a lot mainly because of uh, OBE I want to see them look strong you know he's put on some pretty good matches and the crowd seems to enjoy him but this here this oh my god and they paid him paired him with Katie Forbes like oh my god I watched it a second time I was like this is great this this is what I want to see. This this is what I want. Like when you bring these you know guys back, you know who they're for short term, and you know my concern is okay. We're just they just want to you know want us to see some five star frog splashes and some gores and all that. You know like I don't have interest in that that shit. You know, but when you when you figure out something creatively like this, oh man. I, I I'm just I'm done with the oh let's let's be former ECW guys and get a rah rah from the crowd like I'm just so over that you know WWE did the same thing I'm so over that Th this was so oh god oh I can't wait to see the <laughs> RVD on TV next and to see what the evolution of this is I oh my god it was good so and then Willie Mack and Rich Swan took on the Desi Hit Squad. And, you know, this was fine. This was okay. I think they're, you know, they're building. They kept Shira from ringside because the whole thing is Desi Hit Squad's not going to lose if Shira is there. So, you know, they can't take losses if Shira's hanging around, um, especially since they would obviously outnumber their opponents. But Rich Swan and Willie needed, needed the win here because they're clearly still in the tag team title picture. And most likely, these two teams are going to wrestle for a long time. You know, much like the LAX and Lucha, Lucha Brothers or LAX and the OGs, you know, like they're probably going to go at it for quite some time because they're, uh, you know, they're probably the two top teams. And as you continue to build Desi Hit Squad up and you've brought Reno Scum back and, uh, you know, the Rascals need to be built up again, you you have to have these two teams be strong. Uh, the North and then Willie Mack and Rich Swan. I'll say that with every match, I really think uh, Rohit Raju is, you know, he's been around with the company for a little while now. I think he's he's really showing his his promise, you know. Uh, he's gotten some good 
spotlights within the X division and everything. And he's starting to get really, really comfortable with who he is. And I think, you know, one day, hopefully we'll kind of see that title run when they decide that the Desi hit squad thing isn't working anymore. And hopefully we're gonna start seeing the mic work from him soon. You know, they tease it a little bit, but, um, in the ring, he's really starting to, to show people like, Whoa, I can, I can go, you know? So his, he had some, some nice moments in this match and, and Swan and Swan and, uh, Willie Mack are always excellent, always entertaining and always really good at what they do. Uh, Rhino challenged RVD a match to a uh, turning point. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm working slowly on this, uh, you know, a series of videos I want to do with how I would change impact impacts, you know, online marketing and they're promoting. I want to have a series of videos because I got to put my money where my mouth is. So one of the things I, you know, I talk about is promote these damn impact plus shows on the, you know, the television. I mean, they do, but they don't give you much of a reason to really tune in. You know, here you've got a, a big angle, which at bound for glory. Let me tell you folks, you could watch on TV. You could see it on TV too. The arena was genuinely shocked by this. Because usually in wrestling, when you, there's a heel turn or something, like you see it coming, you just know it's coming. Like, I love when it's out of the blue like that. And it genuinely shocked the people. And the people were genuinely booing him for it. Someone who they were just cheering on the way out and saying, a whole effing show. RVD, Rob Van Dam. They were just cheering him. They were just cheering him two seconds before that. The people genuinely, he genuinely got heat for that and started getting booed. So now you're taking this, which is entertaining, and say, hey, we're doing this at Turning Point November 9th. Like, there we go, Impact. That's what I'm saying. Moose on the golf course was great. Oh, my God. If he does more of this, please do more of this, Moose. Please. This shit is so funny to me. And, God, they have just tapped into his star potential. Oh, my God. Um, I'm, I, he needs the title though. That's the shitty, oh God. That's why, you know, it would be nice for us to get that mid card title. I know they try to do it with the X division, but oh man, Moose needs some gold. Just like Sammy needed gold. Moose needs some gold. Ken Shamrock came and he had teased that he was going to retire, you know, which I, I mean, was he, wasn't he kind of retired previous to this? I mean, he wasn't taking regular bookings, wrestling and fighting, you know, but Joey Ryan came out, came out. They're going to have a match next week. So I thought this was good. Um, obviously, Ken Shamrock is not hanging around for the long term, but if he's, if he's here for this set of tapings in Windsor, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, the match at slam, or sorry, at bound for glory wasn't very good, but the build was good. And, you know, I still would invest. I was still invested in it, even though the match itself wasn't phenomenal. And I don't mind seeing him face some other, other people, you know, because I'm a sucker for fresh matches. And that's why I've been like so sour on the Tessa versus Sammy and OVE. I mean, Tessa has been doing intergender wrestling now for months and there hasn't been a single match that didn't include a member of OVE. Like, oh my gosh, give us something fresh. So it doesn't matter who it is. If we when when I see just fresh matches, fresh shit on TV, I'm into it. So if Ken Shamrock faces Joy Ryan this week and then he gets a couple other matches with other Impact talent, I would be I'd be good with it. I'd be cool. Ace Austin and Eddie Edwards. This is their fifth match. Um, it's not their last. It's not going to be their last match. They've already had a street fight. I'm over street fights at this point. I'm over Monster Ball, Monsters Ball. You know, I'm just, I'm over those. And, you know, I'll get into the steel cage match in a, in a little bit, which I'm not over. But, you know, I like these guys a lot. I think I fast forwarded past the segment with Johnny Swinger and Alicia. So I need, I need to find that. Or hopefully it's on YouTube. I'm sure it is. So I need, I need to check that out. Um, but this match was good. It, you know, I like the way Eddie came down. Eddie always feels like a really big deal when he comes out there. And as he is kind of less, you know, about Kenny and being silly now, he he looks like he could he could get it back into the world title picture now. He's starting to feel like a bigger deal to me, like as they find a way to make him a little more serious. 
But Ace Austin wins this thing. The, the, the spot where he dove into the trash can was great. That was excellent. And it was a good match, but I'm just, I've, I, like, I've seen it so many times. I'm waiting for what's, where is this going? Was it progressing to? And if, if it wasn't for these backstage segments with Alicia, this feud would suck. So that's why, you know, at Impact, I give them props on their backstage storytelling. But I feel like they can't, they're they not... Yes, there, there's heat between them in the ring, but I feel like that the backstage segment and then the matches itself are two com- totally different entities and, and to where one is really entertaining for me and the other is just watching these two people fight back and forth. Where Eddie's never beat... I mean, I don't even know who won at the... Uh, the Road to Glory or whatever, Prelude to Glory. I don't even know who won that match because I didn't watch it. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember why I didn't watch it. I just, I may have completely forgot, to be honest. So I'll probably go back and check it out. But I think Ace has actually beat him every time because he beat him in the X Division qualifying match. He beat him here. And then I think he won the other two by disqualification. So I would imagine Eddie most likely beat him at the, on the impact plus show or Twitch, whatever it was, I'm sure he won, but like, where, where's it going? Uh, that's just, that's just what, what I want to know. The flashback, they, Oh my God. When I saw Sue young and Jessica havoc on the screen, it's like, finally, like give us something flashback to something that is current, you know, like people who, who didn't watch What's going on in Pursuit? Why not? Yeah, show us the Pursuit shit. Perfect. I didn't know this was going to lead to them repackaging Sue Young. Holy shit. I've given them so many props for the way they've elongated Sue Young and Impact. Like, if you say you take Rosemary or Sue Young, like, you could put them on WWE and they would be, look what happened to Matt Hardy, you know what I mean? Like, they don't know how to take, do anything with those characters. They've had to repackage Bray Bri- Wyatt 50 times and they keep failing at it. So, with Rosemary, Sue Young, like, man, the way Impact has kept those guy, those two knockouts fresh and entertaining and, you know, kept the aura alive... But yeah, we were definitely at a point where Sue Young, I'm like, man, where did, where did they go with her next? Oh my God. This fucking Susie shit? Yes. I cannot I cannot believe they had the balls to repackage Sue Young. Who's been using this gimmick for, you know, how long now? I'm sure she'll still use it on the indies, but... God, yes. I... I'm... I... Whew. I'm befumbled. I'm stumbling over myself. I cannot wait, 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 wait to see what this turns into. And this, the segment with the Deaners was cool. That, like the whole su 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 su. I thought that was a little over the top, but everything else was was good. They were eating bread. I hope that's not what they had in catering, but just eating bread rolls. That, oh, can't wait. And then the world title street. Uh, I'm sorry, steel cage match. As I saw the street fights, I'm I'm over them. Like I'm so over them. This, oh yes, a steel cage match. Even Josh said we haven't gotten these in two years, and you know the commentary was pretty good for this show. Um, I think Don Callis is the worst. He's not the worst, but I wouldn't, I would not oppose to a new color commentator. Um, he started the night off so good, and then he turns heel for Ace Austin, and then goes right back to baby. Oh, it's awful. I don't get it. I wish. God, they're doing such good things, you know, these two with Impact. But, like, I wish I knew. Maybe that way I'd complain about it less. I wish I knew what the goal was with commentary to where you flip-flop like this. And um, when I still still used to watch NXT and WWE, JBL used to do it. Corey Graves used to do it. And I'm like, is this the new thing? Is this a trend that you pick and choose when to be a heel? And then you go back to, you know, so, ugh, ugh. Anyway, uh, great commentary for the the world title match, and this this was great. Um, I don't, I think people like the Bound for Glory match better, but as I said, I can't relate because I was there, and it's just different. And watching on TV with the commentary and the storytelling and everything, but um, 
you know, they busted up Brian Cage this time. And the way he came down pissed off and the way he jumped up the cage, like, oh, great storytelling. Fucking great. And the fact that he got busted up this time, great. Um, I like the finish of the match. And, you know, looking back at it, this was the right thing to do. Get Brian Cage his, his moment and then get Sammy Callahan that title reign. You know, that way they both they both look good. So, you know, Cage got his Bound for Glory moment with his wife and that title, you know, celebration that he wanted. So now he has to, to chase, but then they brought Tessa out. And I know in the live, for the live audience, she challenged him and he turned her down. So I wish they didn't go right into Tessa here because it, it makes it look like, okay, well, Brian Cage, let's push him to the side. These guys fought, you know, what felt like 50 million times, even though they, they really didn't. But... You know, they were involved in this long feud and Brian Cage loses. Now we're just going to, what's next for Brian Cage? You know, he should have, he should continue this with Sammy. Even if Sammy wins, he should continue something. So we'll see what happens with Cage, but I, I'm really disappointed to see Tessa just thrown in there right away. She's not the number one contender for the world title. She hasn't won a match like that. She hasn't, she didn't win it bound for glory. Like you can't just make her the number one contender. So we'll see. Um, props to Impact for this episode for Access TV, their Access TV debut. Uh, loved it. I hope you did too. I hope a lot of new people give it a chance. I w- I would imagine the viewership was good for it because look at the NWA's first episode. You're talking about half a million on YouTube, another hundred thousand on uh, Facebook, and then you look at their next episodes. They're two three hundred thousand you know there's still multiple hundred thousands of people but they're gone back to about probably what they're going to be now that first episode is where people give it a chance so i think impact that's where they failed so bad on pop tv i think impact really delivered this time around um so props to them for the episode and i hope people who gave it a chance really enjoyed it I i would have not had the rascals so early up in the show doing the treehouse thing because some people who don't watch impact are going to get that, you know, so there was a few things I would have shuffled around, but uh, you know, the cold open and everything is, is good. It feels like a new show, you know, they're just, it feels different. It feels very different. That's what I've been wanting for a long time. Thanks for checking in with me, folks. I am BQ and I will talk to you soon. Peace.